Okay, here we are, we're getting ready to print an etching plate. And so uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to walk through the process of um, inking up and wiping an intaglio uh, plate. So this is a master study plate that I've done uh, for our class, you're gonna have to do a master study print as well. Um, so this is a Rembrandt master study that I've been working on for years and years, and it's got a lot of uh, mostly etching, some engraving and dry point in there as well. So I'm gonna show you how to wipe that particular plate up and we'll work our way Kind of through that. So the first thing that I always suggest that you do is that you turn on the hot plate. So the hot plate is over here. It's, the temperature should be set the way it's supposed to be. And there's a little switch on the back side of it over here that you just flip on. And that cranks on the hot plate. You want to get that good and warm before you go to wipe up your plate. And then we keep a whole bunch of phone books right here that people can use to um, clean up. I'll show you again how that works here in a little bit. So I like to take the phone book and put it on top of the hot plate and then I like to take my um, etching plate here and put that on there and let that kind of start to warm up. You don't want it smoking, cooking hot. You don't want to bake this on there. You just want it on there. Uh, you want to warm it. So, uh, you know, this is where you get to wear your awesome gloves. So you want to make sure that you put on your, your gloves at this point. And then you come over here and all of our inks are on this wall. They're all kind of neatly labeled. We have our four primary colors. Um, white is actually right here. We don't keep white. Um, in these caulking guns, but for the black ink that I'm going to use, you're just going to come over here and grab the one that's got the black ink in it. It's pretty easy to tell from the end that it's black. And you just want to squeeze a little bit of ink out. It doesn't need to be a ton. We're just looking for maybe like a silver dollar size, um, you know, maybe an inch and a half size puddle there. And you always want to make sure that you push this button right here and you back the pressure off. If you don't do that, when you go to put the gun back in its holster over here, it's gonna keep running and it makes a giant mess. So if I come in the room and people haven't released the pressure on this, it's gonna make me unhappy. So we wanna, after you're done squeezing out your ink, you can just put this back where it goes, the holster over here that says black on it. You can store it back over there in that. <clears throat> now what we wanna do is we wanna get a palette knife, one of these ink knives, and then we wanna grab this um, burnt plate oil. So it says over here, it says burn plate oil one drop at a time. We want to go ahead and grab that. And I always like to add just, just a couple of drops. So one, two, three, four, five. We'll go with five drops for this one. Just helps you to count it out and remember it. Um, so we'll go ahead and put the burnt plate oil right here. And then we just want to take our ink knife and we just want to kind of mix this ink in real nicely. So we want to try and kind of work it in. You want to do this is what's called warming the ink up. So you want to make sure that we get the ink all good and mixed and all warmed up and prepped and ready to go um, so that it's all kind of loosened up, right? Because this, as we know, the oil-based ink is just linseed oil with just maybe a little bit of varnish or something like that and pigment. So the linseed oil needs to get kind of warmed up for it to really print nicely. So, and there's a million different ways you can modify your ink. The burnt plate oil, if you add that in, it just kind of gives a little bit more stickiness. It keeps it so that you don't quite, um, maybe so you don't overlap the plate quite as easily. So once you've got your ink mixed, your plate's warm, you just want to go ahead and grab one of these cards over here. So we have cards and the spot is clearly labeled for that. And you just want to get a little bit of your ink onto your card kind of like this. Then we want to just squeegee that on there. And we want to just kind of squeegee it on. And the warm plate, it's kind of like butter, right? If your toast is warm, the butter smooths, smoothly goes on there. If the toast is cold, well, it doesn't always go on there so nicely. And if, you know, the butter is really hard and just came out of the fridge, it doesn't squeeze down into all the little, you know, pores of your bread quite as easily or something, right? So. You just want to make sure that you're doing a really good job of getting all of the ink on here. So you want to try and just uh, you know, go back and forth a couple of different ways. And then what I like to do is take kind of a clean edge of the card after I've got the ink in there. And we're just trying to squish it down into all the low uh, places on the plate. And then I just pull, pull it off here and just kind of put deposit the excess ink back on. And the more ink you can kind of squeegee off of your plate at this point, the less work it's going to be to wipe the plate, which I'm sure you are all going to be fans of as you go along. So I'm trying to get as much of the ink off of here as I can. Once I've got that off, then I just take 
my, um, you know, this thing which kind of contained all of the nasty edges that we got on there. And then we'll just, we'll throw that in the garbage can. So, put that in the trash. And now my plate, as you can see, it's got ink all over it, so it's all, you know, nice and prepped and ready to, uh, ready to be wiped. Okay, so once my plate is, uh, the ink is on it, and I'm ready to start wiping the plate, I need to find the right kind of tarlatan. So right here underneath the hot plate, we keep the different bins of tarlatan. And so you always want to start with the most dirty tarlatan you can find, the most nasty, gnarly, greasy, gross tarlatan. If you're looking for another color, other than black, there's a whole bunch of, there's the warm red ones, there's yellows, there's blues, and then there's the black and kind of gray ones underneath there too. But for our, most of the time we're going to be printing in black, so I'm going to start with this. And then I'm just going to really, the plate's still warm from being on the um, hot plate. I'm just going to really slowly start moving the tarlatan around. And when you ball up your tarlatan, you don't want to wipe the tarlatan with the ball of the tarlatan like this, where it's all kind of nasty and where all of the folds and stuff are pointing down. Because as you do that, it's going to leave weird marks in higher or lower areas. What you want to do is open up the tarlatan. You want to kind of fold it up nicely into a ball. And then you want to have a nice, a really nice and smooth ball right there like that. So that it looks kind of like this one where it's just nice and um, nice and smooth, no wrinkles or anything like that. And then I'm just going to reel slowly, because the idea with wiping an etching plate is you want to wipe it slowly. You don't want to over wipe. You don't want to scrub all of the ink off of the surface of the plate. You want to leave ink down in the low spots and you just want to take it off the surface. So I'm not pushing down hard right now. All I'm doing is just letting the ball of my tarleton scooch across the surface. Think of it like smooth, sort of just skimming across the surface of your plate. You're not gouging down in there trying to get all the ink out. You're just trying to move it off the surface. And I'm just going to keep wiping this plate until I see that really black ink sort of stop. Sort of stops moving around until I notice that it's kind of just swirling in one place, but there's not a ton of ink left on there. It's just kind of, you know, sitting there. And then I know once I've got kind of the ink smoothed out and it's all kind of in place, then I know that it's time to go ahead and switch to um, my medium tarleton. So again, we always work from dirty to clean in this class. So we start off with this as our dirtiest um, piece of tarleton. And before you put the tarleton back in the bucket, you need to make sure that you kind of open it up and wring it out. If you throw it back in there all gnarled up in a ball, it's gonna, all of it's gonna stick together. So we kind of open it up like that. Find the dirty tarleton thing, we just kind of drape it over the edge like that. And then we want to go ahead and find one of the medium dirty tarletons, something that's kind of gray, a little bit like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and ball that up, just like I did the last one. And I'm going to go ahead and start wiping. And again, I'm not pushing down, just letting the clean tarleton do the work. I don't know if you can kind of see, but it's just starting to kind of polish up in this top corner right up here. So we're starting to get this sort of white um, shroud. So this is a Rembrandt print where uh, Christ has been, uh, you know, crucified. He's dead. And so his disciples have snuck in there in the middle of the night and they're taking him down from the cross. And so it's a very dramatic scene. There's a lot of dramatic lighting in this Rembrandt print. <clears throat> and so we want to make sure that we polish up that this top corner right up here uh, really carefully so that that white really pops out of there. The rest of this print is shrouded in darkness. It's really, really dark and very much, um, you know, it's kind of a middle of the night sort of commando raid, if you will, um, trying, to, trying to take Christ's body down and they're going to go lay it in the tomb. So, um, so again, this is a print that I just copied from Rembrandt pretty much, tried to do exactly what Rembrandt did, tried to figure out what were his tricks and techniques and how did he manage to get his print to sort of turn out the way that it did because it's such a remarkable, a remarkable little piece. So, so I'm working away with my middle gray tarlatan and I'm going to keep uh, working on that until it's a little bit more cleaned up and then we'll switch to the light color. Okay, so I've been working on this print. I've got the plate wiped pretty nicely all the way down to where um, I'm ready to switch over to the clean tarlatan. So I've gotten a clean tarlatan. Now, when it doesn't have any kind of really stray marks on it or anything like that. Um, and uh, so we went from dark to middle, middle kind of gray, and now we're working our way into the light 
uh, tarleton. And what can happen is as the middle ones get a little bit more gnarly, we're going to switch those over to the dirty. We'll end up throwing the dirty ones out, and we'll end up putting the, uh, um, you know, the clean ones will kind of work their way down the line. So it means we don't go through as much tarleton. But so you can see here that this plate is nice and it's kind of starting to polish up a little bit. We've got a good amount of um, kind of light starting to come out. So now, rather than overdo it, I'm trying to keep from over wiping this plate, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to polish up the areas that need it. So the areas I really want to have be clean and white and light, I'm going to go ahead and just work on polishing those up here. And remember that wiping a plate is an awful lot like, um, you know, any other kind of art form where there's kind of like a tactile muscle memory component to it. So the longer you work with a particular plate, the more you're going to learn about what it can give you and what it can't. It's kind of like, I don't know, a piece of equipment um, or a, uh, you know, a musical instrument. You know what this particular, you know, guitar is capable of playing and other guitars are better for other things. And so this plate, the more you print it, the more you proof it, the better you're going to get at knowing what it'll give you. So right away, you're going to start off wanting to just get this over with, like, man, this is so boring. Why am I not watching TV or playing on my computer or something? But you want to take your time. You want to really resist what my old professor, George Roberts, used to call your scrubbing instincts. So you want to, your mom always taught you how to scrub the heck out of something. In this case, you're just going to sort of work your way slowly. And you want to just kind of subtly work on it. And so the places where I really want this to turn out nicely is I really want to polish up this spot down here and this area up here. I'm going to really try and pop those areas out of the, out of the print. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit those. I'm going fast. I'm not pushing down hard still. I'm just letting the motion of this tight little motion that I make like this, this is the thing that will help me um, you know, get that stuff off there. And whenever it gets kind of dirty like this, I'm just going to open up my tarleton, move it to a clean place, and continue polishing away. So I really want the, there's a hand that's in this, uh, this corner right here. I really want that to pop out, so I'm going to kind of work on that area and pop that hand out of there. There's a kind of a torch thing that a person's holding here. I'm going to pop that out. And then, you know, down here where the light would be hitting this uh, sort of the funeral sort of um, carrying thing that the disciples have made, I'm going to try to make sure that I kind of polish that up a little bit too, because all these white sheets should be pretty polished. So, all right, so I've gone ahead and I've got it pretty well polished. I'm going to leave this dark sky area up here in the top. I'm going to leave that alone. I don't want to mess with that. I'm going to let, let that be nice and black. Just going to try to really work on these figures. So once I get it to this point and I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to um, phone book. And so you can do this with your hand. I'll show you hand wiping when we do dry point printing. But for now, I'm just going to um, polish this. And so I like to use these rubber gloves because it helps the, um, the phone book stick a little bit. And what we want to do is we want to skim the surface of the phone book over this plate, but we do not want to push down hard. I'm not scrubbing again. I'm just letting that phone book kind of glide over the surface. And what the phone book does is it really polishes up the white areas. So any place where I really want to make sure I've got things popping out, I'm going to work on that. So I'm going to work on this hand right over here that I've been talking about so much that I really want to have that thing really sort of jump out at you. And maybe just a little bit, you know, right down here on this funeral bed. So, so once I'm done with that and I feel like, okay, the print is pretty well wiped. It's, uh, you know, I can see I don't have any big chunks of ink in there. Nothing's really grimy or anything like that. Then I'm going to go ahead and work on uh, wiping the edges of the plate and I'll get the edges clean and I'll figure out how to um, get that ready to print. Okay, so so wiping the edges of your plate is the last stage before you get ready to run your plate through the press, which is just behind me here. So usually I keep my gloves on because you can either keep your hands dirty and put gloves on before you touch your paper, or you can keep the gloves on as you wipe your print up and then you can just take them off and they're clean. So I like to do it that way. Um, but what we want to do is we want to kind of clean up our edges so that they're nice and crisp and there's not a lot of gwishy ink, we call it, when the ink gwishes out from underneath the plate. Um, so I like to use an old rag. In this case, I have a sock, but who knows what kind of rags we'll have around here at that point. And I like to take them, and then I like to very carefully um, 
sort of just pinch, like real, real lightly. I just like to pinch and then just run the edge of that rag along uh, the edge of the plate. And I'm just trying to get that beveled area, that 45 degree angle bevel that we put on our plates before. Just trying to kind of clean that up so that I get all of the ink that's kind of lurking on there off and uh, there's not going to be any gwishing, so stuff that shoots out of the bottom of the print um, when the plate is trapped between the press and uh, the piece of paper. So, um, so I'll just wipe these up. You want to be careful you don't overdo it, right? You want to be careful that you're not um, over wiping the edges of these or else that'll look uh, goofy when you go to on the print. Um, and it'll stray off to spots you don't want it to. Okay, so now I've wiped the edges of my plate. My plate is uh, clean and ready to print and you can kind of see it as the light hits it. Um, you can see the different kind of subtleties of light and dark. And now when I go to print this, it's gonna end up printing in reverse um, on my piece of paper under pressure.